I V M. Welcome to All Things Policy, a daily podcast supported by Pragati, a flagship media initiative of the Takshashila Institution. We're a bunch of policy nerds based in Bengaluru, and we like to bring a fresh perspective to Indian affairs and an Indian perspective to global affairs. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and join us for today's chat. Hello and welcome to All Things Policy. My name is Rohan, and I am here today with Sapni Ji Krishna and Pratik Bagre. It's been a crazy week or a month as far as tech developments have been concerned, and we are here for a catch-up episode of sorts, especially with the intersection of tech and war and geopolitics. It's an interesting episode to be doing, but. Before we go in, if you like the kind of stuff that we talk about on this podcast, consider signing up for our public policy courses. We offer specializations in health and governance, in technology policy, in public policy, and defense and foreign affairs. So let's sort of begin. I want to preface this episode by saying that we're going to be talking about Russia and Ukraine a fair bit, and how sort of tech companies have been in the middle of all of this. And generally, we've seen that. tech plays an important role as far as you know, protests are concerned as far as war is concerned for example manoj and i did a paper looking at our framework of radically network societies and how protests in hong kong were enabled by technology and if you can go find that and read it it's on the shilas website we'll put it in the show notes but given that the tech is sort of embedded and integrated into how these things develop let's start and talk about again in the meat of it and talk about how states have acknowledged that tech is sort of the building block of how they are going to approach some of these things and talk about how states have asked tech companies to do certain things so i'll begin with you pratik can you talk to me about the situation and what states have been asking of tech companies yeah so so let's start with before the actual invasion right at the last week of february so even before that and and, and i think we've discussed this on previous episodes in the context of hostage taking laws etc but russia has this law that's been nicknamed the landing law right which is parts of it were also coming into effect on i think the the end of feb one of the aspects of that law was that the tech companies to set up local offices or basically have legal entities set up in in russia uh, and this goes back to you know the episode we did about the navalny app which was taken down and the potential that local employees may have been threatened before to catch in against that right so there is this looming specter of this landing law that that was playing a role and i think sometime in november last year november 2021 about 13 companies were notified by the by the russian government as being under this law and i think i'll just quick, quickly run through the list right that was meta twitter tiktok like me viber telegram discord zoom Apple, Google, Spotify, and Twitch. Right? So these were the these were the companies that that were basically required to set up uh, local offices. And I think the status seems to have been that Apple, TikTok, and Spotify had complied. Although we we'll probably come to Spotify a little later in terms of uh, how it responded. Twitch and Telegram have not, and I think Facebook, Twitter have partially complied. And as far as I know, and this is you know st- still not confirmed. As far as I know, they, at least Twitter did not set up a local office as per the deadline. And so when all this broke out, I think. That's just sort of reiterated this landing law aspect that they needed to set up these these offices. So now let's just quickly go back go to Ukraine before coming back to to what I said. Right now again, uh, b- before getting to you know the ask from the the Ukrainian government, I do want to acknowledge the fact that look, that is a country at war, so they are within their rights to make whatever type of asks that that they feel protect their interests. The complicated part is how the rest of the world then then responds and looks at it in terms of the kind of precedents that and it's important to call out I think the role that digital minister has played and I think he's also the the vice prime minister right Mikhailo Fedorov and I may be mispronouncing that name but you should be interested to watch how you know so he's been using his uh, Twitter account very effectively to make appeals to to various platforms and tech companies to to take certain action right? uh, and it it started off with. asks to to google to restrict i think google pay and google market to youtube to block essentially russian state media channels and facebook and instagram to block access for citizens of the russian federation and this is in the video also noted that the goal is not to block information sources but engage in courts youth proactive and smart people at one point there was also uh, an, an ask to the the cryptocurrency community to pass on any information about the uh, wallet that belongs to russian and belarusian politicians and this escalated later on with saying that hey okay he also then asked for cryptocurrency exchanges to block addresses of russian users right saying that it it crucial to go beyond just politicians right there was also a call that was put out for an it army of sorts and and i think thousands of people signed up for that 
But so far, this has been on the likes of, and then I think it, it's been on the likes of the largely restricting information. At least you look at the context of the ask that were made of uh, social media platforms, but it, it also then started to expand beyond that, right? So I think there were asks for Viber and, and PayPal to block services in Russia effectively. Right? And I, I think one ask that still stands out and I think is listed on Twitter account as being an important one is that Visa and MasterCard should block services on all cards in Russia. Right? And the last couple of days, there's also been a shift towards asking web infrastructure companies, right? So in terms of Cloudflare and, and IDM, right? Asking them to not protect Russian web resources from DDoS attacks and, and, and things like that, right? So it's been interesting to watch how these, how different types of platforms and companies have been pulled into this, right? In terms of being asked to, to pick a side or, or take some sort of action. Uh, I think earlier this week, there was also a phase where a lot of gaming, game streaming companies were asked to prevent Russians from participating in eSport events. Also asked, I think, the likes of Epic Games, Nintendo, Rockstar Games, a few others to halt games in Russia. I, I'm not sure what exactly halt games in, in Russia means, but you, you, you've seen that. And there, I think they were asked for uh, Oracle and, and SAP to, to stop product services and software updates, etc. Right? So, and, and I think one of the two of the major one that we had so I referenced the MasterCard Visa and the other was I think essentially asking Apple and Google to block the App Store and the, and the Play Store uh, in Russia right now the way the Russian government has responded I think is so as platforms have then started fact checking or labeling content put out by by Russian state media I think they asked for for that to stop happening and when that didn't happen they took to throttling Facebook and Twitter I think net blocks etc have been following that post and and I think regular tweets showing that that traffic appears to be appears to be throttled the other of course aspect is the EU in general right which is also talking about we don't have a lot of details on this one is that you know, they, they had asked platforms to block Russian state media channels which I think as time has progressed most of them have done in various stages, but most of them have done that. The other thing that they pointed out was that they want to build tools to block their, in quote, disinformation in Europe, which is interesting because it will be interesting to see how that plays out, what sort of tools you develop, etc. But, you know, I, I think we, we'll come back to that in the implication bit of it, right? But this is where it is from a state's perspective and, and what's happening. All right. Thanks for that, Pratik. I think that was quite insightful. I want to get into how tech companies have responded across the board. But before we do that, let's take a quick commercial break. Hey everybody, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On Advertising is Dead, foodpreneur and chef Saranj Koyla joins Varun to talk about his latest venture, Bombay Meal Rolls. On Pesa Vesa, Anupam speaks to Ashwin Patni, head product and alternatives at Axis AMC. They discuss the LSS investing in India. On Smarter with Sid, Siddharth highlights lessons we should all learn from the Tinder Swindler documentary. On Thirty Minute Raste, Kesho takes us on a tour of Dubai's Grand Malls. And on Say No to Drama, Chetna talks about our relationship with money. So, on a personal note, I wanted to let you all know that this week marks the 7th anniversary since I started IBM. I'm eternally grateful to the team we have here, especially Kavita Rajwade and Teja Sringarpure, who have been here since the beginning. They've seen the struggles, our eventual acquisition by Pratilipi, and our continued struggles to make podcasting a large and thriving part of the media industry. We have the best hosts in the world, and I have to say that I'm so glad and so grateful that they have chosen to work with us. And finally, I'd like to say thank you to you, the millions of folks who have heard or watched our content. All I can say is, you ain't seen nothing yet. I hope you join us as we continue this journey. In the meanwhile, do follow us on social media where IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. Also, don't forget to rate us on any platform you're listening to. You can also check us out on YouTube. Get a list of all of our channels. You can go to ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube, where you can go to all the channels. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, SBI Life Insurance, Bank of Baroda, Max Life Insurance, India Water Portal, and HDFC Life Insurance. Thank you so much for making this possible. Hi, welcome back. I'm talking to Pratik Bagre and Sapni Ji Krishna. And uh, Sapni, let's begin with you. Let's talk about how tech companies have responded across resources, across platforms and so on. So yeah, over to you. Right. Thanks. Well, I think right, very similar to what uh, Pratik has been had earlier mentioned about a bunch of services that stage requests on tech companies. A, a lot of them have already taken steps. So one would be obviously uh, with respect to semiconductor chips, I think AMD, Intel, and obviously DSMC has temporarily paused sales and even shipping to the best of my knowledge of chips to Russia. 
then on top of that, we also have Apple and Google sort of reigning in on the app store and the availability of Russian state media. And something very similar is uh, happening with Microsoft as well. Is also said that it will remove state-owned media apps from uh, Windows, their Windows platforms. And uh, interestingly, even uh, GoDaddy, they are also no longer accepting new registrations. And the same thing, I think, with respect to Oracle, something very similar is happening with respect to their uh, cloud services, where temporarily after, uh, as uh, Pratik had pointed out, the vice prime minister's requests, they have temporarily suspended operations in Russia. And even I think something very interesting is there is the local ride hailing app in Russia. It's called Yandex.taxi. So Uber has quite some share in, in the Russian ride hailing service and it's sort of trying to distance itself from the same and accelerating its exit from the shares it holds of uh, Yandex.taxi. And yeah, coming more into the DCN part of it, which we often talk about, First is Meta, right? So with respect to Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram, they seem to have restricted access to the Russian state media and particularly within the EU. And also, as Pratik mentioned, fact-checking is something they rejected or, I mean, the plea of the Russian state to stop king and labeling of content. And they've also, uh, on the monetizing and ads front, most of the big tech companies have sort of taken sides with the the NATO part of the conflict with Ukraine, where Twitter, Meta, Google, all of them have sort of toned down the ability of Russian state media to have, I mean, Russian state media, and even in many cases in the entirety of Russia, the ability to monetize content that has, that seems to have gone down, that seems to have been taken, like the plug seems to have been taken off. And yeah, on YouTube, obviously, we see that uh, Russian state media's ability for monetization of content has gone down. And interestingly, uh, Netflix has also refused to air Russian state media channels on its streaming service. And TikTok also sort of has, I think, made restrictions to state-controlled, state-owned media, Russian state-owned media. And that's a bunch of things DCNs have done. And it's also interesting to note that there are further steps taken in the platform space by individuals who identify as Ukrainians or individuals who identify with the cause of the Ukrainians, ranging from online platforms for volunteering with respect to war efforts on a range of things, right from being a part of the Cyber One initiatives to volunteering for other causes. There are platforms that have sprung up, something which is even more, I think, worrying as a trend would be how this is effectively a, a full-blown cyber war, I would say, with the amount of... But, but the narrative clearly seems to be in Ukraine's side. Uh, they have tried to counter misinformation that comes from the Russian side, which seems to be very loud, at least in Russia, with respect to the conversation that the Russian bubble is sort of experiencing with on the invasion. So there is quite some stuff happening on the tech and DC and front. Yeah, I, I just want to add, because this is such a fast developing situation, I think by the time this episode comes out, we'll probably have a lot more happen. I think, for example, I think just before we started this, I, I, I was you know, trying to see what, what's the latest and it looks like even Reddit has gone and essentially blocked the ability to link to Russian state media worldwide, right? This is after they you know, a bunch of subreddit may have already done this. And they'd also already quarantined, I think, the R Russia subreddit, right? So there is there's a whole lot of stuff happening, I think, between there's a good chance that between now when we're recording this and the time this episode actually comes out, we'd probably see a lot more uh, action as well. The interesting one, I think, was also to, to the extent that just to, you know, so Reddit was an interesting one. I think this week there was also some action taken by OnlyFans, right? Uh, in the sense that they had blocked Russian creator account. A, a lot of them were temporarily knocked out or weren't able to access their payment. I believe that was reversed later and I think in the statement, it seems to, you know, from the company itself, it seems to be some fallout of the, the SWIFT restrictions. But it's it's interesting to watch how this is taking place at so many different levels, right? Essentially, any place where 
information can be contested. This is playing out. In, and another example was, I think, Google Maps is having to, Google Maps and TripAdvisor are having to restrict the ability to post reviews for certain properties because they were being used to basically make statements about the situation, right? So it's playing out everywhere. Wherever you can publish information, I think that this is playing out on the internet. So we'll have to see where this goes. Right. Thanks, guys. I want to sort of quickly get into the precedent that this is setting because of course this is an exceptional situation but the actions tech platforms take here are going to have the ripple effects and i want to understand them better so do you guys want to take a crack at that maybe sapni and then prati yeah as i think it's it's very interesting to sort of at this point a lot of these steps seem to be unavoidable because obviously a good number of people i think agree that the invasion was an excessive use of aggressive force. So because of the those reasons to protect the state sovereignty, to protect the people, it's, it is imminent that such steps be taken. But how does this work out in another situation? How does this work out in a non-European situation? How does this work out when other authoritarian regimes sort of ask the step, maybe the ability for them or the president said that they can also ask the step come maybe cut off channels for the larger population for their own to, to advance their agenda. They I don't I don't think it looks like it looks rosy. And another thing is it it's it's another demonstration of the extent of power these platforms have over the real life consequences of things that happen anywhere across the globe. So how does this happen if something like this happens in India or if something like this happens elsewhere, as I said, outside of the Europe? If American tech companies, majorly a good bunch of American investor tech companies, have the access to quote-unquote kill switches like these, I think it should be, th- these are advancements we should be uh, thinking about and these are steps we should be thinking about with a lot of nuance. Yeah, yeah. So there's there definitely big split the red energy, right? Coming out of this whole this whole situation, the fact that tech companies are taking such actions in a way, again, and then quote, I think, what, what Evelyn Dweck said, right? It, it seems like a lot of these actions are being taken without us having some sort of normative framework for making these decisions, right? Now, something like Google and Apple, you know, restricting live location on their maps in Ukraine, you can see how, how that plays into the conflict versus cutting off Russian users wholesale from Google Pay, right? There, there has to be that aspect of that question of proportionality as well, right? What guardrails are platforms using to make deals to make deep decisions right and you know it, it, in my view it should be about restricting or preventing loss of life in Ukraine beyond that is something where we need to think very carefully right because there is like I said there is very clear splinter net trajectories that this is setting us down the path of right any country that wants strategic autonomy in the information states is going to be sitting back and thinking hey we need to shore up our own assets because we don't want to be at the mercy of these transnational corporations with, with immense power that will turn us off for seemingly no, no reason, right? Or cut us off for, for seemingly no reason. So I think we need to be pretty careful here in terms of what, what's happening. And then I think I forgot to, uh, I overlooked or I, I missed mentioning one of the asks on Ukrainian government, which was also essentially asking for the Russian country level, country code top level domain to be to be restricted in some way or the other, right? Without getting into the details of their uh, of the letter that, that they had sent. So, you know, there, there is that, you know, if, there actually was the ability to follow through on that and someone actually, and the various organizations actually gone and done that. What would that have meant for A, from a proportionality perspective, B, from, from the future of the internet perspective, those are aspects I think to consider as well. There's another theme that I want to touch on. Unsurprisingly, it's from the information ecosystem, misinformation kind of space. One narrative that we're seeing playing out is that, look, Russia has lost the information war, right? And I think I think that's an extremely interesting one in the sense that you're seeing, you know, a lot of narratives that aren't really being contested in the same way that a pro-Russian narrative would be, right? And I think this is, again, so, so the question to ask here is what's changed, right? Because I think 2016 to 2020, they have the general belief that Russian disinformation is very effective. 2022 now, we, we, we seem to be seeing the limitations, right? So, what's changed, right? Is it that we're in an environment where we're already, you know, a lot of people are essentially have already decided that they are going to take an, a position against Russia, which is why the belief seems to be, right? And again, this is not really empirically proved, right? The, the belief seems to be that Russia has lost the information war. So, so th- there are some aspects to consider there as well. And we'll have to see how that uh, plays out in 
in the coming weeks and thanks for that pratik i as you said i think it's a developing story we'll see how this intersection plays out and we'll keep a close eye on this so thanks pratik thanks for the for joining in and we will see you guys in the next episode of all things policy if you liked our show don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the ivm network you can tune into them on the ivm podcast app ivmpodcast.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts you can also follow ivm on social media the handle is at ivm podcasts on twitter facebook and instagram and hey if you'd like to dive into takshashila's research on technology strategy and economic affairs check us out at our twitter handle at takshashila inst or our website takshashila.org.in सफर रास्ते मंजिल और मुकाम अक्सर ये हमसे कुछ कहना चाहते हैं पर हम हैं कि अपनी रोजमर्रा की जिंदगी में इन्हें सुनने से कतराते हैं नमस्ते दोस्तों मेरा नाम है केशव चतुर्वेदी और मैं आपको ले चलूंगा कुछ ऐसे सफर पर जहां आपको एक नया नजरिया मिलेगा सफर और मंजिलों को देखने का आइए इन किस्से कहानियों में डूब जाए हर मंगलवार और शुक्रवार வணக்கங்க <laughs> Enjoy பண்ணுங்க நன்றி